uh, here we are doing the World of Warcraft Dragonflight Warrior PvP Talent Roundtable. Uh, Absolute Legends with us. We have uh, Revo and Joe. Um, guys, I, I'm, I'm not going to... If people know don't know who you are, they can go and Google search you. I think... Uh, but I, I'd be really surprised if nobody watching this knows who Rev and Joe are. Uh, Absolute Legends in the Warrior PvP realm communities. Um, so... On that, I just want to say, uh, guys, welcome. Um, so let's dive right into this. Uh, so I... <laughs> this is so hard to do the second time around. All right, let's di let's dive right into this. Uh, Joe, I'm going to go to you again uh, right off the bat here. Uh, let's talk general trees since this is a complete step off of what we've seen for the last four expansions. Uh, so what, what in the general tree is really standing out to you as something that's really important that to, to what we were used to playing in these last uh, last several years. So yeah, um, the main thing um, was just that Stormbolt impending victory and double time has kind of always been an annoying choice that Warriors had to make. Typically going Stormbolt to pick up a stun, but now you can get all three of them in the general tree, which I think is huge because, I mean, all of these talents are just so great. Stormbolt, just necessary stun. Impending victory is like just an OP heal and Double time just massively helps with chasing down targets, having extra mobility. The fact that we get all three of those is massive. And I f think I also forgot to mention that things such as o honed reflexes and concussive blows, I'm also kind of excited to see just because having a reduction on pummel and then kind of a reward where you successfully land an interrupt can be a nice like min max thing again kind of like a nice pvp niche thing where you know you get rewarded for playing the game properly i would say indeed i i think you're right though i think the the ability to be able to to not have to pick between one of those talents but have all three is just a huge step off from what we're used to yeah uh absolutely absolutely excited for all that i uh, rev what about you? What's the uh, what's something that's really standing out to you? I'd say compared to what we're used to playing in uh, for warriors in general. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree with what Joe said about the, the being able to pick up Stormbolt double time and impending, and and the uh, the you know the concussive blows, which is very akin to the old glyph of root interruption. If people remember that from like Mop, um, where you got a damage bonus for actually landing pummel, which I think is super cool, and it makes it it makes it feel like more rewarding. Um, because sometimes, you know, you lock out a caster like a mage on sheep or something and they'll just cast damage on you. If you lock them out on damage, they'll just cast sheep on you, etc. So it, it makes it more rewarding to lock out casters uh, on different trees or casters that have multiple trees. Um, but in general, I really like the way that this iteration, at least, of the warrior tree is laid out for the general tree. Uh, it makes it feel like you can pick up most of the things that you want to get and you can kind of make some variations of builds um, to, to pick up different things for different situations i think the plan from what i've heard is that you're supposed to be able to change your tree in like the arena starting room so mm -hmm. you know with the way that the tree is right now you can easily switch you know to grab things for different situations you're not it's not a cookie cutter anymore which i think is really exciting indeed i i'm pretty excited about that as well and yet yeah, my understanding of the is that the same um where you're going to be able to have some pre-selected or, or preset talent trees You'll have them pre-saved. So I think you have like seven of them or something like that. So yeah, so when we're in the preparation room, uh, you know, if you have your, uh, I don't know, like a, a Malik Cleave uh, to counter a Malik Cleave, then you can have that one preset. If you're up against a Wizard Cleave, then you just click a button and then boom, automatically you'll have your your other set, which uh, which I think is is really awesome. And and you're right, like the, the fact that we're stepping away from this one and done cookie cutter that I think we're... Uh, I'm personally a little bit bored of that. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know about you guys, yeah. but oh, yeah. Should... Hold on, <laughs> I, I, sorry. I just want to say I, I think there, there's the people that are like that, that like having that change and that that be able to to pick things really enjoy that. I think there's also um, on the more casual side of just being able to look up uh, a guide on on any of the websites, you know, or, or go to one of your guys's guides and take that that generalized tree and just leave it alone and not have to worry about it is also beneficial as well. Uh, I don't know, Joe, you're going to say something. What do you think? I, I pretty much just, yeah, it was going on uh, exactly what you said that some people kind of prefer being able to, you know, kind of min max their talent choices, have a lot of options and maybe 
you know, pick slight, you know, differences, whereas other people, yeah, they may just want kind of a more simplistic, you know, a talent tree maybe for themselves, you know, not have too many hard options so that they can just kind of pick what's easy for them, knowing that they can just kind of get comfortable with their build. Exactly. All right. Well, how about uh, since since generally you know, there's a general tree and then there's obviously the the more specified the the specific tree for arms fury and prot why don't we dive right into the arms tree again uh well again we'll dive into the arms tree we'll get onto that side and and i'm going to bring up your first one here joe um you you, you, okay. call, this, you call this one your uh, arms execute build and yes yeah, uh, so it's basically revolves around like executable strike being your main sources of damage um again I, I, as you saw, I have a lot of builds because I'm not sure which one's going to be best, but it kind mm -hmm. of has, in the general tree at least, it's just kind of got the same approach to how Arms Warrior kind of is now, where you have basically at the very bottom, you have the Elysia Might and the, the what's called Signet Legendary right now, but it becomes a talent here in memory of, of a Tormented Warlord. Um, but one thing about this one, which is I think is really cool, is that it works with avatar and colossus smash um which casts recklessness and since colossus smash is on such a low cooldown you know 45 seconds and you can get reduction for it with anger management i feel like that itself will just be really like op damage I i'm looking forward to playing around with that and seeing how much damage we do and you know of course alicia might just having spear eight second cooldown the one Thing about Spear of Bastion now, it is like 1.5 minute cooldown, mm -hmm. so it will be a bit easier to play around for enemy teams because right now you can have like a minute cooldown, even sometimes 40 seconds, and it could be a bit difficult for enemy teams to play around again, a bit class dependent. But overall, still excited about having Alicia Mike because I think it's out of all the covenants, I feel like for Warrior to have, it's probably the best one for them to bring forward and the most exciting one to play with again kind of the pvp elitist in me prefers that to something like a banner <laughs> where banner you can't really go wrong with and it's just you know this kind of like melee cleave brain play style like cooldown and it's just another cooldown whereas alicia might you know you have to use it well if you miss it you know you get punished for it and mm -hmm. i think it looks really good it definitely, it definitely brings in more of that uh, that uh, risk and reward game style where if, if, yeah, if you take exactly. a risk, but you're able to play it to that higher level, then you you get rewarded. Um, mm -hmm. I can see the benefit of being able to just you know throw down you know just do that cooldown, throw down a banner, and uh, I think what's yeah. what's, the, what's the thing we say now? Just push W. And just... Yeah, pretty much just the belly cleave <laughs> kind of mindset where you go in smoke, kill people. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, I think. So I'm just trying to look here. I'm just going to switch over. I'm just, compared to so th there was that one that you built, and then I just want to look at the one that you brought up, Rev, which was um, similar because you still have the Elysium Might and the Spear of Bastion. Mm -hmm. But I want to say you you put a little bit more on the right side of the PVP talents there. Oh, um, am I looking at the wrong? Yeah, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so you went more central time. So you you know, down the do with the shield wall and down the central tree. Um, yeah. Sort of, what's the differences there? Why why did you go there? So I went a little bit more central. I don't really personally like the signet playstyle all that much. I mean, it's it's obviously very good, but it's like I I went for more of a like mortal strike heavy build. I mean, like Joe's build goes down through. Like thunderclap into the blade and thunder, which extends your rend, um, which I think will be a very good for spread pressure. But mm -hmm. I went with more of a kind of single target mortal strike. Uh, I went and I got uh, frothing berserker, which is the reset on or the refund on you know twenty percent of the rage that spent a chance to get twenty percent rage spent back uh, on mortal strike, and uh, that kind of ties into like the arms tree that I did. It, it's a little bit more like mortal strike damage heavy. Uh, mm -hmm. rather than like bleed and spread pressure damage uh, i think it's going to depend what comps you're playing and and what you know comps you're playing against and stuff like that 
as well. And uh, I kind of I, I I didn't go all the way left, and I skipped over like shattering throw because you'll be able to change this, like we talked about in the starting room, right? So you don't need right. shattering throw versus you know seventy five percent of teams, but you are going to obviously want it for something. So you you will like the build that I built is not going to be like a set and forget kind of thing. You'll definitely have to change this depending on what you play versus. But I went for more of like a single target. You know, probably more of a melee leap type build, or like a KFC like hunter warrior type build, or mage warrior type build. Okay, and and I think that's that's worth. I think that was worth discussing anyway. Just uh, you know, like I said, there's these differences we can play through, um, and just uh, like I said, it, it depends on well, it depends on your play style, but also against mm-hmm. what, what you're playing, right? Because it, it correct me if I'm wrong, but um, a a generalized uh, AOE cleave bleed doesn't really work well against a a double ranged like a, a wizard cleave or something like that because you're you're probably not going to be attacking more than one player at the same time or or are you I I don't know like what do you guys think Yeah I mean I think yeah like you say multi target well stuff like the cle- I feel like the sweep and strengths and sanctions and whirlwind builds they usually don't work but mm-hmm. I feel like the bleed builds depending how powerful they are they could become kind of the go to single target um mm-hmm. but yeah one of the problems with the bleed builds right now is like you have to invest a lot of talents into it so i think i counted i think it was like six talents yeah six talents if you want to pick up like all of the bleed damaging spells from the arms tree and yeah. you're just going to end up like losing something quite major so unless the bleed build is just like far better than any of the other single target damage builds um yeah, I don't really see it being put to use. But like you said, um, double range, it's usually not good into it unless there's some sort of pet. If it's like a Warlock pet, like against Demo, for instance, mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. you could multi-dot a pet, then it can become useful, or hunt a pet, for instance. Um, but yeah, in general, otherwise, if it's going to rely on that, then it might not be too great to use unless you're against those classes. Yeah. Well, yeah. something to note, too, that I... Sorry to interrupt, but... Yeah. The way it used to be uh, in like the the prior builds is is thunderclap cost less rage. It was like twenty rage, I think, or or something along those lines. Where All right, yeah, I was more excited for the rend build then because rend is thirty rage, and and thunderclap if you take blood and thunder would extend your rend for a lower cost. But they obviously addressed that because thunderclap now costs the same amount as rend. So I was kind of excited to yeah. do like a rend build at that point where you could kind of put up rend and then refresh it at a cheaper cost with thunderclap. But now it's like the same, so it's more of a more of a, a different choice, I think, than it was before. Yeah, the one thing I guess the extra benefit though is if you thunder, it's just the blood and thunder talent where if you thunderclap mm-hmm. multiple targets, then the red spread, and so that yeah. will make it worth if you just even spread it once. Yeah, but yeah, yeah I I just think. As much as a bleed build could be fun to play, I, the reason why I like bleed builds in general or playing with Rend is that I feel like min max in damage kind of matters more as arms, and it could be, it could kind of differentiate you between another warrior if you can do more damage because you have better bleed management. But again, the six talents missing, like you'll end up missing out, you know, Mortal Strike being able to reset. You might have to miss out on Massacre or even the wall breaker talent for the kill, you kind of have to lose out on too many good talents, I think, just to make the bleed bit work. So unless the bleeds are OP, then it's probably not going to be a thing. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of curious with thinking about bleed builds and, and that, would that, like, what would you be, assuming we're playing threes, or I guess um, they would work really good in RBGs as well. I can see with all the spread pressure and the amount of the amount of pressure you can get out of uh, multiple bleeds going on, but if we're talking arena, what what kind of teammate would you be playing with to to help um you know, just just help make the bleed build work? Would that be more like a uh, a feral warrior healer, or are you or would you doing be doing something with more consistent damage? Honestly, I think it can kind of work in pretty much any composition because it's just all about damage the only ones where you may um may not want to you to, or can't really use it is if you play warrior mage where like a mage needs to sheep the off targets more often sheep the healers often so you can't really 
spread your bleed damage. Like you just want your mage to spam sheep. Maybe similar to hunters as well, having to trap healers, and you maybe don't care about spread pressure too much. But a lot of warrior comps are kind of built around the warrior just doing as much damage as possible. So mm -hmm. again, if the bleed build is just better, then you know for that it could be nice. I mean, one thing that's fun with the bleed build is the like skull splitter with the fracture. I think that could be like a fun thing to play around with when you just refresh a rend and have deep wounds. Um, and then again, you know, Thunderous Roar is also another like bleed talent, but from what I've heard, it's pretty lackluster. So I'm a bit sad about that because I think, you know, if you want us to play Thunderous Roar or have it be an option, then it basically needs to hit hard. Otherwise, at least your might is just always going to be a better pick. So what what is Thunderous Roar? I, I don't remember that one. Oh, uh, so it's a new one. Well, it's basically it's got like the old Dragon Roar icon. It's uh in the general tree, like bet in between Avatar and Spear of Bastion. Uh, okay. So basically, it's a one point five minute cooldown. Does a lot of damage, and then the uh, the talents beneath it basically give it a bleed effect and make it a one minute cooldown. Um, so. Dragon Roar used to do a lot of damage in general, and it was mainly a Fury talent. And it was like a 30 second cooldown. It was a nice bit of burst damage, but. And that's what. It looks like this is going to be kind of that, but on a longer cooldown. So. Mm. And unless it hits really hard, it's just kind of not as good as the others, because stuff like Avatar is also good for utility, right? You can break, break out of a root and snare from it as well, as well as like giving you damage and. You know, Alicia might kind of same thing where it does damage, but it also just keeps people immobile. So it's just like so good in PvP scenarios. Yeah, the the, the right handed like the thunderous words, the right handed buff to like the the thunderous roar as well. Like it makes it increase all your other bleed damage too. So it increases uh, the bleed damage of that and like your rendered deep ones, I think. So uh, but okay, it's, yeah. But it's so hard to feel like that's better than spear into like anything. Like if you if you're thinking about it, if you can hit two targets with it, right? If you're playing versus melee cleave and you can get the benefit of your bleeds on both target and the bonus bleeds on both target, but at the same time, why would you not take spear so you can peel them off of your teammates and stuff like that? It it, it feels hard to find value in it unless it's really a lot of damage. Yeah, exactly. Like you you essentially have to lose spear or avatar to go the thunderous raw route, so. It has to, yeah, it has to do a lot of damage. Nice. Uh, just curious, I noticed in all of your trees, um, none of you, or neither of you, uh, picked the uh, the Shockwave talent with the Conal Shock in the front, plus damaging. And I'm just wondering, yeah. why? So, the Shockwave talent, I mean... In theory, it could be good, but again, it would only be a niche thing where you could reliably hit three targets so you can gain from the cooldown reduction. Mm -hmm. The reason why now it's worse is just because it's a 40 second cooldown and it's a two second stun. So there's just so many other stuns that are better, like single target for sure. You know, your, your own Stormbolt's going to be better. And if you play with like a Rogue or a Feral, they're going to have a, a better stun as well. So the only use for Shockwave is like if you can reliably hit three targets, um, you know, over and over again. So, you know, you can do a lot of damage and a lot of lockdown. Otherwise, I feel like it doesn't have as much value. It was kind of the same in WOD. You had it, the choice between Shockwave and Stormwall, I believe, in WOD. And mm -hmm. I only used Shockwave against Jungle Cleave. And it was like very niche because... Uh, I remember I would always like me and my team would always pillar kite, so the hunter and the feral have to stack, and then there's the pet, and I could land triple shock waves. So it's mm -hmm. yeah, I just think it's very niche to make work. Fair enough. Yeah, uh, I I have to admit when I saw it, the first thing I thought of was RBGs and uh, in, the, oh, in yeah. the scrum, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. For for RBGs, it could it could definitely be a thing if it hits hard. Yeah. Then yeah. I assume it will because of Sonic Boom, but yeah, um, yeah that... it could definitely be a thing in RPGs. Well, 350% mm -hmm. increased and always critical strike. Like, yeah, that's that sounds yeah. finisher to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, you could even go the new heroic leap talent, right? Which drags them in. I, I haven't yeah. picked it on any of them, but so you could do mm -hmm. that, spare everything, shockwave them all. 
because they'll have good shit at synergy with Alicia Might mm-hmm. as well, since that increases crit damage. So yeah, maybe it's it's a thing. Yeah. I would imagine it's a thing in RBGs, but in arena, mm-hmm. it's yeah, maybe too hard to to set up. J- trying to get three, just trying to get three in RBG or in, in anything other than RBGs is hard. So mm-hmm. yeah. It's also yeah. just, it's, it's so far away in the talent that you have to, to, it, to get to it. Art is not very good for, for Arena specifically. I mean, they may be okay for RBGs, but like the sidearm talent doesn't seem that particularly great. And endurance trading is okay, I guess, but it doesn't really do that much for you. It just seems like the, the things that you'd have to lose to even pick it up and the things that you'd pick up instead just are so not worth it to get mm-hmm. to get to it. In my opinion, at least. Yeah. No, fair, fair. Yeah, I agree. Okay. I, I just want to pick, before we move on to Fury, um, so we did the, the bleed build and the execute, but there's still this unhinged build that you had done, Joe. And I'm just wondering, it, oh, yeah. what, what, what's this about? So, basically, um, in the general tree, instead of going Memory of Tormented Warlord, you go Blade Master, so... Avatar and Bladesome basically just proc Signet for each other, and with Unhinged, so the way it works is that Unhinged procs when you pop the Avatar, because Avatar procs Bladestorm, and then Unhinged procs from that. So basically you can just keep using Bladestorm as like a damaging move, and it does a lot of damage, um, especially with Hurricane as well, where every time you Bladestorm you keep gaining movement speed and strength. So it can be a fun build to, if you are one of these people that love doing the unhinged kind of, you know, slays, um, especially with spear, like spearing people Mm. with sweeping strikes unhinged is really insane. Like it works on that and it does a lot of burst damage. The main problem is obviously it's quite a few talents. I think it's a bit less reliable. Um, I think I prefer the like normal kind of mortal strike execute build Um, uh, because well, two th- two reasons. One, with unhinged, you can't control where the damage goes. So, if you're blade storming and a f- you know an earth element was on top of you, then the earth only has a chance to soak those hits. So then it's pretty much not doing any valuable damage. Um, so yeah, against pet teams, it could be you know annoying or even even in general, it's it's going to be a bit less control unless you don't mind cleaving two targets or you can reliably hit your main target. And the other thing is, I think I just like Bladestorm as utility. A lot of the times I feel like just Bladestorming out of CC or a root or like a kidney shot, you know, things like that. I really love using Bladestorm like that and having the option to use it as a utility. When it becomes like your main source of damage, then it can be a bit more clunky to use or it just, I don't know. For me, I just don't like, yeah, being using, uh, using Bladestorm for damage. Yeah, definitely. I, I 100% agree. All right. So, all right. Uh, again, yeah, I don't know. Again, that that's. I was I was looking at things from an RBG kind of uh, BG kind of perspective, and I could see that definitely yeah, being that's... fun. Mm-hmm. Man. Yeah. Right. Again, it could be good at RBGs. Yeah, if you're blade storming a lot of targets, then spreading your deep wounds. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's, I I think I never saw if it is like when I was doing this, I was always thinking of. In an arena perspective, but yeah, in RBGs, mm-hmm. it could be very good. There seems to be like quite a few builds that you'll be able to play a lot of different ways, I think, which is nice about having the bigger challenge for uses. There may be like one or two specs that are considered like quote unquote the arena spec, but it seems like there will be quite a lot of viable different specs depending on how you want to play. Oh, indeed. Yeah. Indeed. Uh, speaking of other viable specs, uh, let's look at Fury. Is is Fury going to be viable, or are we going to be back to the, uh, you know, Arms is the arena only, and then we'll maybe look at, uh, maybe have some occasional Furies, but it's going to be a bit strong. Or is is it going to be more Arms again that we're going to see in arena? Um, I think. Oh, do you want to go first? Do you want to go first, Robert? No, you can. <laughs> you can talk. No, you can talk. Okay. Um, no, I just feel bad for always going first kind of thing. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, I mean, the problem with Fury, like, it's going to be a more vague, like, and my, like, main problem with Fury is the fact that I feel like the spec 
is designed to either be too good or too bad. Like you're either gonna if you're either gonna be OP, like you know, Fury Warriors kind of now, where you can just go in, smash someone, like do unhealable damage and you know, not die at the same time. It's either gonna be like that or it's just not gonna do anything because it's just like 99 percent of the game you're doing damage and you're sticking to your target just getting your slaughterhouse stacks so it's that's the issue with fury in my mm. opinion like it needs like a complete redesign so it's like a like in pvp so it's like a spec that like can do can provide something more other than just damage otherwise you know it's gonna be it's either going to be too good or too bad, in my opinion. But yeah, obviously, saying that, a lot of people like playing Fury. It's very, yeah. it could be very like a fun spec to play, and it's you know probably the easiest spec to learn in arena. So if you're like new at playing arena and you just want to, you know, play a spec that isn't so overwhelming with like a play style, then Fury is like a, a good spec to just get into and yeah, slay mm-hmm. people. I think one of the biggest things going into Dragonflight that that's going to make the difference between Fury at Arms again is is so the way that the way that Fury is right now um, with the reckless abandon talent and and the having the raging blow charge over and over makes it quite yeah. easy to play like Joe was saying where it's a really straightforward kind of do damage and do nothing else kind of spec. I mean, going into Dragonflight, you 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 lose that charge. I believe they're taking that out from the reckless yeah. abandon talent, so. At that point, Fury and Arms have very similar like like they the PvP talents for Arms are pretty much sub- subjectively better, right? You have War Banner, you have Duel if you need it, you have you have more utility. Fury doesn't have those options, and and at this point, the biggest thing about Fury is that you can always stick to your target and you can keep the Slaughterhouse stacks up. When you lose the Raging Blow Charge, you you don't get that. And and Fury is a kind of spec that needs a lot of uptime to be able to keep your stacks, to keep your frenzy stacks, to be able to do damage in general, uh, and have a lot because it requires a lot of rage and it has big cost spenders. Uh, and it, it just seems to me like when you take that away, there's no advantage for Fury over Arms because when Arms connects, it's going to do big chunky damage, big burst damage. It doesn't need a lot of setup time. But Fury is different where you need a lot of uptime and you kind of have to have setup time. And if you're not connecting all the time and it just doesn't seem to have like a, a massive advantage over over arms to me, but it obviously just depends on our rage generation and Dragonflight and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah for sure. To, to add to that, sorry, I was just going to say, yeah, I feel like Fury, um, they're changing. Basically, the four set now is where you get Recklessness procs, um, every rage you blow. They're changing that to Rampage. So it's basically mm-hmm. a nerf. And um, that's pretty much what made Fury Warriors the way they are now, is that they keep getting Recklessness procs, because that's what allows them to maintain Slaughterhouse stacks. If you can't maintain, like, eight stacks of Slaughterhouse, then Fury Warriors is, like, significantly weaker, in my opinion. So that will be the other thing. And typically, at the start of expansions, your gear sets are lower, you don't have as much haste. So if Fury can't really reliably keep up eight stacks of slaughterhouse then yeah i don't see it being better than arms really Mm -hmm. Uh, well i guess we'll have to wait and see what they bring up for pvp talents to help add with that because that seems to be where we get those nuances um understanding all that uh I'm actually kind of depressed now because I was really kind of hoping Fury was going to maintain <laughs> some sort of uh, <laughs> oh, uh, no. vi- uh, vibe. I hate using the word viable. I think I think every spec can be viable, but more uh, I st- stay up in those in higher middle. tiers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Well, let's here. Let's uh, look at this talent tree first. Um, oh, actually, I think this is the one I want to look at first. I'm going to rev. I think we're we're gonna look at yours first. So sure. why don't you run us through your talent tree here, what you chose and why. Uh so I kinda went down obviously I think you kinda it's pretty much necessary to go entirely through the middle to maintain the majority of things that you have right now as Fury. So uh obviously you need Rampage, a hack and slash, which is a um the refunding of Raging Blow, and then you obviously need recklessness. Um, anger management to benefit recklessness, and then the unbridled ferocity and the depths of insanity, which are basically conduits right now. Uh, mm-hmm. Depths of insanity, and then unbridled fury is uh, what Joe was talking about. The four piece, which is now rampage instead of raging blow, but I still think that it's pretty much necessary. Um, I went like left, 
through to get to Odin's Fury, which I'm hoping is similar to Legion. That was one of my favorite things about Legion Warrior. Odin's Fury was a really super fun ability. Uh, and if it does as much damage and causes as much pressure as it did back then, it'll be quite a lot of fun. So I'm hoping that it's similar to that, because that was really fun um, in, in Legion. Mm-hmm. Uh, so having that, the Odin's Fury with the Dancing Blades, giving you auto attack speed, recklessness, uh, and then I pick up Skull Banner as well. Uh, I, I'm, I'm hoping that Skull Banner maybe gets changed. Uh, I didn't pick it in my arms build uh, because it seems like the reason I picked it in the Fury build was because you kind of need it to get through to the rest of the stuff. But mm-hmm. if it's a three minute cooldown the way it is right now, and it's still killable the way that it was, you know, in in Mop when it was originally in the game, um, it was killable. It had very low health. It was pretty much you know. Any caster could kill it pretty quickly. Any melee could kill it pretty quickly. Uh, as a three-minute cooldown, I'm hoping they either make it unkillable or lower the cooldown. Because there's, if you think about it, the way the game is now and, and moving into Dragonflight, every class that you know their cooldowns, there are almost no three-minute cooldowns left. The only cool three-minute cooldown I can think of off the top of my head is, is Berserk from from Feral Druids. Okay, everything else is two minutes, one minute, half minutes, one minute. So it if best, especially if it's killable, I'd like to see them reduce. The cooldown on that but that's kind of a, a tangent but <laughs> it seems like the fury build is pretty pretty straightforward i mean uh, looking at joe's is pretty similar to mine we had a mm-hmm. little bit of various yeah. variation but it seems like the talents that you're going to take are pretty pretty much set yeah i i I agree. It's just like pretty much the raging blow like the same build it is now you just you know, basically, instead of being a Necrolord warrior, you're the new, you know, or the old Kyrian with the Elysium might still. Um, but yeah, I guess the one thing is like he, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure why you're not a fan of Signet. It was just the other thing I wanted to ask you about <laughs> um, compared to like all the other talents. But I mean, it's fair. I don't mind if you're not. And yeah, like you said, you kind of pick up Skull Banner because there's nothing really else to pick up. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe you could go an SMF build, which is, I think that's the build showing now. Um, but it's just like, I mean, similar to a bleed build where it's like, it's not as many talent points extensive, but it's just a lot of talent points to go into like improved bloodthirst damage, which doesn't seem to really do much. I mean, in my opinion, I feel like it should just be Titans, Grip, Warriors, and then, you know, if you want to be SMF, you can like, you know, do a transmog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, 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 all, I, mm-hmm. I was just gonna say I, I feel like uh there's some warriors out there that would disagree with you and they want single mana fury to to be a thing. Yeah, end all be all and yeah. Uh all right, sorry, uh tangent. Um I don't know, is is there it, it seems like looking at these builds, yeah, it, it's pretty much you guys pretty much have the same thing, just with a little bit of nuance depending on your your personal choice or play style. Um, uh, is there? I don't know, is there is there any any changes here that you could foresee, um, depending on, I guess, uh, who you're playing against or who you're playing with? Like, is it, what what's what are the nuances maybe? Um. I'll just yeah, I'll take a look at Rose build now. So I guess um well the whirlwind thing, I feel like the the improved whirlwind is yeah, I could see why everyone would have picked that because a lot of the times you are kind of spending most of you, the majority of your game just doing single target damage, but I just like the whirlwind option to spread slaughterhouse and just keep up a little bit of cleave pressure if I can ever get it. Um, mm-hmm. It also makes whirlwind cost like get a p- supply rage instead of cost and rage. So without it, if you ever were to, you should like basically never whirlwind. Otherwise, it's gonna cost rage and you won't be able to rampage. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also don't know if I can get you on board with being in critical thinking. Uh, it's the right talent just because it increases rage and blow damage as well. It's like ten percent extra damage if it crits. So I yeah, feel like that talent's totally worth it. I yeah. think over yeah. I, I took like the invigorating fury, which is the like the enraged region like buff. Oh like, yeah, that good versus some things, but yeah, yeah, I, I actually agree with that too. I think um yeah, it's it situational. 
yeah, against comps, like, I would imagine something like Jungle Cleave now, where you kind of have to use maybe more than just your heals, or you want your heals to be a bit stronger, then, yeah, mm. something like that could definitely be put into work. And again, like, I think I agree with, like, Wrecking Throw or Showering Throw being more of a situational talent as well, like, you just want to use maybe Wrecking Throw against classes like Warlocks, where they have the shields, or maybe Priests, and then Showering Throw may be good into, like, the likes of mages and paladins, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it definitely seems like there's a lot of choice, like depending on what you're playing, right? One hundred percent. Um, I'm just wondering because shattering throw is is very important nowadays to to pop the bubbles and the ice blocks and that. Are you guys expecting that that's still going to be a like? Because I think it just shatters. It doesn't actually do much damage beyond that right are we expecting mm-hmm. that it's going to maintain that same idea where it's just going to shatter the the shield but not do any damage beyond that or is it going to have that do would you like to see it do the double part where it shatters and then also does worthwhile damage so the yeah. the talents now like uh they're called you can get a choice between wrecking throw and shadow throw and they both say that they can do the 500 mm-hmm. percent increased damage and then yeah. If you pick Demolition, the PvP talent, it does an additional 500, so like mm-hmm. a one-minute cooldown. Uh, but that's with Sharing Throw only. The good thing mm-hmm. about Wrecking Throw is like... So that doesn't... Wrecking Throw doesn't get rid of any immunities. It just straight up does damage into big shields, but it will do the same damage, and it's on a 45-second cooldown, and you don't need to cast it. It's just instant, an instant like 30-yard range throw. So it's going to be easier to like utilize into those classes. But again, you know, not everyone has these big shields where you care about it so much. So you can like mm-hmm. go into other talents. It's more of a situational pick. Okay. Again, back to the uh, depending who you're up against and what you're playing. Yeah, exactly. Nice. Nice. All right. Uh, well, we're, we're, we're pushing. You guys are awesome, but we're pushing through this really fast. <laughs> uh, which, no, which is fine, which is fine. Um, I guess the, the next part, which we haven't really talked about yet, is the uh, the prop pal- or the, the prop warrior, prop paladin in my head, prop warrior talent tree. Um, so I know I'd asked, uh, well, I'd asked you both, Rev, you, you're the one that stepped up to the plate and decided to, to, to put something together. Um, I guess first and foremost, uh, is uh, has any of this been tested, or is this all just theory crafting that you took a look at the uh, the talent tree and kind of said this is what I think would be pretty fun to play? Yeah, this is definitely speculative <clears throat> for sure. I haven't tested any of this on like on beta or anything, um, personally. But okay. I kind of just did like like similar to what <clears throat> people did this expansion with the big shield slam build. Um, you can kind of get something very similar to that. So that it seems like there's a, a, a choice to... And you can kind of do both, which is cool. You can do, like, the big shield slam build, and there's also some, like, team utility um, where you can obviously spec into shield wall, but you can get uh, Unbreakable Will, which is in the protection-specific tree, um, where you get two charges of shield wall, and you can give 50% of its effect to all your party members, which I think is in the game right now. I can't remember if it's a PvP talent. I think it's a PvP talent. Or a, a legendary, something, one of those two. That I, I did it yeah. in AWC at one point <laughs> to try to beat Brett Warrior. It doesn't work um, right now, but <laughs> maybe it will work um, depending on how tuning and stuff is next expansion. Uh, I mean, personally, hope it doesn't work, but <laughs> uh, maybe in things like RPGs, you know, Prop Warriors will become a viable fight carrier again. Uh, because right now it's pretty much entirely guardian druid, right? You don't have a choice. Like you have to play with the guardian druid. So maybe in RPGs, um, prop warriors will kind of become a thing again. Because back in like cataclysm and stuff, like the, it was the other way around, right? Prop warrior was like the only flag carrier that you could bring. You couldn't bring anything else. So mm-hmm. um, the build that I did was more so just for damage rather than for like flag carrying or anything like that. Because there are you know other things on the, like the right hand side of the tree that are a little bit more, um, you know damage reduction like spell block uh, where you can block spells against you for 14 seconds is two minute cool on that i think could be really cool um but i didn't take it in mm-hmm. this build because it's more geared towards damage um no but way. shield charge 
is in the left side, which I think is really cool. If, if people played back in WAD when, when Glad, uh, Gladiator Stance was a thing, um, they brought back Shield Charge, where it's not the same as it was, um, but it's still pretty cool. 45 second cooldown now, uh, where you like charge to your enemy with your shield and then stuns them for four seconds. Yeah, I think didn't we see some some clips coming out of Dragonflight where people were were messing around on the alpha and they were like one shotting people with this? I don't, I didn't see them, but I could see it if it if it does a lot of damage, especially with the champion floor underneath it. Yeah, where it gives you revenge and generates thirty rage, like it could it could be a lot of damage potentially. I could totally see that. Yeah, I th I think shield charge is probably. What, yeah, it's probably one of my new favorite talents, but it's just unfortunate that it's on the proxy. Okay. Like it, it kind of gives you a lot of things, right? Like it gives you extra mobility, it gives you another stun, and it deals. Well, it looks like it deals a lot of damage. I haven't tested it myself, so it's just like kind of a three-in-one talent on a forty-five-second cooldown. I think it looks really fun to play with. Uh, yeah, it's just a shame. It's not on the other specs, to be honest, because I feel like I would love that as Furial Arms. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, you get the Outburst, which is like kind of the bread and butter for pro war warriors right now, because what you really struggled with before was just damage. Like, you, your damage was just negligible. Like, you yeah. could never really hit hard or be a threat in the arena, apart from just, you know, being disruptive and being protective of your teammates so having an outburst is definitely needed so that mm -hmm. in conjunction with a shield charge like if you get an outburst proc and you like shield charge into a shield slam then i could see that burst damage being difficult to deal with if they're not suspecting it for sure yeah um, i think the thing about shield charge that makes it so reminiscent is it's basically the way that that charge used to be right where it was at like yeah. eight, eight to twenty five yards that has a stun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's basically charged then. Yeah, yeah, we just want charge them back. That's yeah, <laughs> but yeah, no, yeah, it is a super good talent, and yeah, I think another really good talent. Even though you haven't picked it yet, it, I don't know how pro warriors will work like in a reading game, but the battle scarred Varen basically is just like if you're ever dying as a pro warrior then you just pick mm -hmm. it and you will essentially never die like it seems really op mm -hmm. yeah, i don't know yeah. if i i had that i mean it makes sense as a pro a spell basically because um it, it might be yeah a, if they ever become a viable thing in rbgs then i can imagine something like this is super yeah, good definitely take that in like an fc build for sure yeah and especially on the right of that as well then you have spell block which mm -hmm. seems OP. The only yeah, I, I'm not sure what it means by block. I'm guessing this is gonna be like a divine protection for spells, which also mm -hmm. seems really it's OP. Fair. It just yeah. lasts for a long time. Um Yeah, two minute and... cooldown, fourteen second block. Like <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Yeah, it seems really nice. And considering that I felt like that's what Port Warriors were kind of lacking. They were always great at mit mitigating physical damage. Like, you've always been mm -hmm. super OP into physical damage, whereas against the casters, ever since they got rid of Mass Reflect, you've been, you know, kind of just getting rolled by them. So having something like that could make it, you know, a bit easier if you do want to play prot. But yeah, I guess on the biggest spectrum with... I mean, the there's a reason why so many players hate prot specs, right? It's just like... It's just very obnoxious to play into because the problem with prot warriors is what they do is they just they make sure no one on their team dies for a while. They disrupt your damage. They nerf your damage against mm -hmm. the whole team. So it's just like basically mm -hmm. all that does is make these drawn out longer games where you know, you get the eight minute, ten minute games, and that's probably the biggest reason why people don't like playing into them. I feel like if they could just somehow make prots more of like a damage spec in arena it could be fun because they are fun specs to play yourselves it's just oh yeah it's always going to be one of those specs where it's like fun to play and then but when you're against it you don't want to play against it <laughs> well I, I think people can say the same thing these days about it. uh half the specs where they're fun to play but they're not so fun yeah. to play against right <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. That's Fury yeah. Warrior right now as well. Yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I find it interesting. Two things out of you guys, what you're talking. Uh, first and foremost, 
I, I found it interesting, Joe, your your like of the shield charge and the fact that it requires a shield. Uh, that you oh. would like to use it as a uh, as an arms or a fury. W- would that not mean that you'd have to stop using a, a two handed or, or stop using two dual wielding? I don't think it says, it just says, yeah, charge to an enemy with your shield. So I don't know if that specifically means you need a shield. If you do need a shield, then yeah, obviously. Um, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't like that. I mean, as yeah. um, like does, well, it used to say, it doesn't, I guess it doesn't anymore. It used to say yeah. raises your shield, but. Yeah, mm. I feel like they, yeah, they kind of got out of, which I also found it like these weapon swapping macros. So they just made it kind of more accessible and easy to use. The problem with weapon swapping macros is there's always that small bit of delay. So you have to, you know, press, you know, a spell reflect, or in this case, if it was to be a shield charge, you would have to press it, you know, a little bit before. But mm. I would assume it wasn't. It's probably just the wording and it's a pro only spell. So it makes sense why it's worded like that. But yeah, yeah. it, it would just if, if I didn't need a shield for it, I would love it. If I did, then yeah, I, I wouldn't care so much. I mean, realistically, right now, I mean, we have shield block. Nobody ever uses it, right? But you do have shield yeah, block, um, which yeah. you would have to weapon swap for. So that it, it's apparent that they don't, they aren't opposed to the weapon swapping type gameplay. I think anymore or necessarily, but I mean, nobody uses shield block ever, ever. I, I don't even think I have it bound anymore. Like it's I, completely worthless. <laughs> yeah, it's funny you say that because I I was actually using it, but a bit mm-hmm. against Windwalkers because Windwalkers I kept flopping to and. Shield block right now, it's actually like a 33% damage nerf, at least to like Windwalkers. So mm. it is worth pressing, like, if you're going to yeah, die. I mean, it's, it's, but yeah. it's just funny that people are so against using these macros because they're so clunky and annoying to use that mm-hmm. they, they, like, no one really presses it. Like, it's just because mm-hmm. you, you not only have to press it in time, like, to, you know, make use out of it, and then you also have to get back into your two-handers, and it, like, sometimes puts you on global. It's just... Yeah, yeah it's annoying. a bit... It's just not, like, fluid gameplay, basically. Yeah, that's something I kind of noticed, like, on live versus, like, I'm playing a lot of, like, pre-patch Wrath stuff, is, like, weapon swapping on Wrath is still annoying, but it's not quite as annoying because it doesn't, like, put you on global... Um, it doesn't do any. It resets your swing timer, which is kind of annoying, at least yeah. now on live. That wouldn't make too much of a difference because you, you have club or rate generation. Um, but the and like the fact that it procs a global is like horrible. That feels terrible. Yeah. Yeah. No one wants to use lose like, but it basically costs two global cooldowns to use. So yeah, yeah. Even though shield block is off global, it still costs two yeah. blocks. It's so bad. <laughs> feels so yeah. bad. Yeah, exactly. All right. I just realized, uh, looking back quickly at the uh, the notes, that uh, you actually had a crotch warrior tree as I, well there, Joe. Yeah, sorry. I, I literally just put that in. I did have one, but I um, I put it. I forgot to put it in because I was doing it a bit last minute today. So. No worries. Um, no worries. But let's, but yeah. let's take a quick look at that one then. I'm just wondering... So I'm seeing you went you went full down the middle of the the prot tree, where yeah Revo filled out he went he he filled out all the center almost and then went full left. What's... Yeah. So so again like well I feel like uh, yeah prot is definitely not my like speciality so I could definitely have quite quite a few wrong PvP talents but I do think if you're ever gonna be you know like I said I was talking about the battle scarred and spell block like if you're ever gonna be dealing with you know dying in the arena then these talents are very op Mm -hmm. but yeah for Mm -hmm. for sure stuff like anger management is good to go i felt like what was difficult to decide was whether they wanted you to go like a rend build or like a sudden death you know massacre execute build or if you wanted to get revenge like it was kind of a bit like tricky for me to know which one was the best um <clears throat> Again, it could just be dependent on what you meet, but I'm sure there's probably one alternative that's just better, better than the rest, to be honest. Um, it, it felt really weird picking up Rend to me. Yeah. Yeah. But you kind of I, have to. Yeah, I think it's like, again, with the Blood and Thunder, and if you're going to Thunderclap a lot, especially because it's Pro yeah. Warrior, like it, it mm. does damage. And, and if you play, there's that PvP talent, Thunderstruck. So Thunderstruck's actually. A really op talent i'm not sure if they're ever going to change this but 
for whatever reason, it just doesn't DR. It just flat out gives you like a one second route. Yeah, so, it's so OP. Yeah, so during Avatar, you can just like spam Thunderclap pretty much like every two seconds, and it's just going to be annoying. But yeah, the other thing, like you said, which Reverie picked up on is the fact that Thunderclap plus 30 Rage, maybe you won't be able to anymore. Um, but yeah, it's pretty much the same. It just feels like, yeah, Shield Charge is a must like that, row. It's just beautiful. And then <laughs> Ra Ravager is just, I mean, that's yeah, very PvE-based. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's going to be like a PvE build if you go the right side. I don't know, maybe RBGs as well, since I don't know you like the RBGs. Um, <laughs> so it could be good there, especially considering Alicia Might makes it easy to like using Spear of Bastard Ravager probably makes it easy to use. And they'll have the yeah. same cooldown. Yeah, I think I think um it's so hard though, especially in RBGs being so team based. Like, you you're gonna have you, you have you have a limited number of people, right? So if if Prot Warrior so if if another protection spec is gonna be your flag carrier, then the choice between having a Prot Warrior uh, or I guess maybe maybe be good for a disruptive if you're going to be in the in the scrum or in the team fights, but I think you'd probably more want a an arms warrior because of that mortal strike effect, um, be able to do that that cleave uh, damage rather than a, a prop warrior just isn't going to be able to bring all that, and and I don't think the utility is worth it compared to what other specs and classes are going to be bringing to to the to the team fights, so. I mean, maybe if you could do like like Joe was saying with the rend and the blood and thunder, uh, thunderclap talent, you could do quite a bit of spread pressure depending on how much damage rend does, I guess. Um, yeah. But yeah, obviously you lose a mortal strike, but so many classes have mortal strike, right? It's not really that iconic to arms anymore. That's true. It could maybe it could maybe yeah. be worth you know the, worthwhile. The only one thing I could think of is just well, fury could have slaughterhouse or arms could have sharp and blade. So I would imagine yeah. in like high end RBGs they try and do like sharp and blade windows where they try and kill so that where the healers can't heal um yeah. the the other thing as well i feel like a lot of the main rbg cleave talents kind of come from the general tree so it's hard to like really distinguish prop from arms in that respect like if you wanted yeah. to, we talk about that shockwave build like any spec could go that um only arms and prop i guess can spread rend like sure he can't but again yeah it's just they, those are in the general talent trees so if you want someone to to do damage, then it could be the arms. However, if you wanted something to not die, then Pro Warrior yeah. would definitely be better. Like Pro Warrior, Pro Warrior could be like a either yeah disruptive in the flag or just even like a flag defender, and like pretty mm -hmm. much would be very hard to take down a Pro Warrior. I would, like just looking at the talents. Oh yeah, especially like that shield block, like. <laughs> Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, you just have shield block. I mean, remember, you get impending double time and silver as prot as well. So impending yeah. for <laughs> prot warriors is ridiculous because um, it's HP based and prot warrior, you have a ton more HP and you could use yeah. stuff like last stand with That's it. Fair. So bad, bad master trinket, I imagine, will come. And then, yeah, that battle scarred veteran is just so ridiculous. Like, it's ridiculous. <laughs> How ridiculous is it? No. All right. <laughs> so I absolutely love this. Um, the, the next question, though, so we, we were talking earlier uh, before the show um, in, in all the prep there, and it, we, we both, we all noticed that the PvP talents haven't changed yet. There was a, a blue post talking about how that they're still revamping a bunch of the PvP talents. They're still looking through all this stuff. Um, so we're still expecting some more development waves to be happening on the classes. Uh, so with that, and and um, it, I like how this kind of threads in because you're talking about how there's there's some PvP talents that really would bolster the the prot tree itself. But oh, I guess what out of out of the, all the trees, uh, arms, fury, and prot, uh, what are some talents that you'd like to see go away because you just like don't like them or you don't see any use of them um i guess i'm gonna throw this you now joe since you always go first i'm gonna go throw this one to rev first it's fine <laughs> i was gonna say you could go first 
Um, so for uh, we can just kind of start with arms. I mean, I personally, Warbringer is nice, and I think that it's 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 a good talent. You know, right mm-hmm. now it's it's good, but I I really would like to see it changed. I mean, I'm obviously like super biased, and I'd like to see Warbringer beat a charge stun. I think that would be really cool to you know have versus casters and stuff like that um especially with how many you know utility spells and and um like mobility spells that casters are getting next expansion uh, i'd like to see like the damage go away and it just be like a charge stun or like the blitz charge stun if people remember that glyph where it would like charge stun one person with, like two people next to them i like charge stun quite a bit and it, i would be willing to give that you know up for a pvp talent to be charge stun mm-hmm. um other than that, for arms, everything is extremely useful. Like every single one of them has a place. Storm of Destruction, arguably not really, and Shadow of the Colossus, I would like replace entirely. Right, you would never take Shadow of the Colossus ever. Um, basically, what it does is every time you charge, it resets the cooldown of Overpower and it increases the amount of rage that you get from charge. Like you don't really ever play it, so they could replace that with something. What it would be, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but that one, and then Storm of Destruction. I think Storm of Destruction is good and it has some uses, but it's probably like the one you would take the least of any of them other than Shadow. Um, Demolition, since they nerfed it, is also like very situational, but it has uses, yeah. um, at least for arms. Okay. Um, sorry, yeah, could I dive in as well? Yeah, the... Jump right in there, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I agree with Shadow of the Colossus. I feel like... I mean, it's just, you know, charge resets the overpower, so it, it gets activated by charge, so when would you ever choose that over Warbringer right now? It's mm-hmm. like night and day, like, it, Warbringer is just so much stronger, and mm-hmm. even before Warbringer, I don't think anyone really picked Shadow of the Colossus, it's just like, you know, you don't really care so much about refunding the extra overpower, you kind of naturally get resets of overpower anyway through your tacticians, so... You don't really... I, I feel like it's not really used. And it's not necessarily bad. I feel like the one of the biggest reasons why it looks bad here is just the Arms Warrior PvP talents right now are so good. Like, mm-hmm. most of the talents are really good, and you can swap a lot of them. You can use, like, a lot of different ones. I mean, Disarm, Duel, Master and Commander, Sharp and Blade, Warband and Warbringer. Like, you use all of these often, and they're all powerful. Mm-hmm. Um... In my opinion, actually, I think Sword of Destruction is good, and I actually think it's going to maybe get better in Dragonflight, just because of anger management and that kind of unhinged spec again. So mm-hmm. if you ever go that unhinged Bladesome spec and you have anger management, anger management actually works for Bladestorm cooldown as well as arms. And the reason why you can't, you don't usually go anger management now is because you lose Dreadnought, but because you can get both in Dragonflight, you could get like really low cooldowns of Blade Storm, and then mm-hmm. Storm of Destruction could be really good. It also applies Mortal Strike to everyone, so it could be nice in like in cleave like matchups like when it's melee cleaves or juggle cleaves. I mm-hmm. typically like that. Um, it also helps you know you can blade some out of roots more often. So I do quite yeah. like that talent, but yeah, I do. I I think Shadow of the Colossus needs to be removed. I also don't like. Death Sentence. I feel like Death Sentence is just, ever since the nerf, and ever since, it was only really OP with Venthyr, and now that yeah. Venthyr isn't going to be, you know, where you could execute targets above 80%, and that's not going to be a thing in Dragonflight, and it has a 6 second cooldown, I feel like no one would really ever be this talent, so I feel like Death Sentence and Shadow of the Colossus, they would ideally just be like something else, really. But f- yeah, fortunately, Arms Warriors, I think, is one of the classes that has like a lot of strong situational PvP talents. So mm-hmm. at the same time, I wouldn't be, you know, I-, I wouldn't be mad if they didn't make much changes. Okay. Yeah, I'd agree. I, I think minimally for Death Sentence, they should remove the six yeah. second cooldown going into Dragonflight because the reason that it was even there in the first place was, was because of Venthyr um, being yeah. a thing. And I don't think it. Re- the cooldown should be there anymore in Dragonflight, at the very least. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Quick question, uh, just you know, spitballing here. So we've seen in some of the other spec trees where some of the PvP talents are actually starting to show up in the trees themselves, which in essentially is giving some some classes a, almost like a fourth PvP slot. 
Um, I, I argue, but, you know, understanding that the, they're putting in new PVP talents, but we're seeing that. Uh, would you guys like to see if they are going to add some more PVP talents? Would would you like to see some of those ones that have been around for a long time and iconic to let's arms specifically in the arms talent tree? Yeah, I actually would love that. I remember it just brings me flashbacks back to BFA where it's you would go what was it? I forget. It was like a was it the Azerite like neck and that mm -hmm. essentially gave you the fourth PvP talent yeah, as well. Um, and it would give you sharp... Strength. Yeah, exactly. That was it. Conflict of Strife. And it would give you sharp and blade, so then you could have the others. And I actually really love that, because sharp and blade is, like, such a good PvP talent, as in it works well into every comp, right? Like, it's always going to be good. It buffs your damage, and it's just going to be nice for killing opportunities, because you don't have much luck down as arms. But mm -hmm. Sharper Blade is like one of your big kind of talents that you use to, yeah, mm -hmm. basically add CC. Like, you know, if you Stormbolt a healer, then Sharpen Blade, you know, the target afterwards, as an example, then it's kind of like an added CC chain. And I think having something like a Sharpen Blade or, you know, any of the strong PvP talents there would be obviously really nice for arms because then it basically just means you can go another strong pvp talent there since you've got so many to choose from yeah i think uh, for arms specifically too like there are some classes where you could add a fourth pvp talent and it literally wouldn't make a difference but arms is one of those where if you add a fourth pvp talent it would become exceptionally stronger for sure yeah for sure i love it i guess uh what about for fury um same conversation really but mm -hmm. uh pvp talents um joe P pvp talents you'd like to see um, uh just removed flat out deleted again yeah death sentence is here still so that should be removed i feel like i mean i would have said barbarian before but because it's an rbg talent i feel like that's fine just in arenas i i've never been a fan of barbarian but i think that could stay because i know it's a, a thing in rbgs um mm -hmm. i think I wouldn't necessarily need everything to be a rework. Actually, maybe it was kind of similar with arms. Maybe Demolition needs a rework now because you get Showering Throne baseline. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not really sure. And you get the additional damage baseline. I'm not really sure that the increased damage really does anything or the reduced cooldown when you consider you already use it against bubble effects. So stuff like a Matrix is like you use it on an ice block that's every five minutes. So the reduced cooldown, you does nothing. So mm -hmm. maybe a change in demolition somehow. Um, another change could be to Death Wish. I feel like this talent could be a super fun, high risk, high reward talent, but at the same time, it's just, it's never really been a viable thing unless you're, you know, if it's like low rated teams, low rated games where people don't know about it or in general, yeah, if people don't know about it, it could be good, but most of the time it's just, kind of like you know a troll talent that you could look to play around with have fun but if their opposition realize you're playing with death wish you're just gonna get slaughtered the, yeah. the other thing too about death wish is i don't remember when they'd made this change but you used to be able to you could stack up your death wish to however many stacks and then you could cancel aura it you basically right click yeah. it off and get rid of it and they changed it so you can't do that anymore so it used to be nice because it was high risk high reward but you could get rid of it at, you know if people started targeting you if you became the target and and that was kind of a skill cap with that in my opinion but the way it is now you stack it up and if you can't if, if people target you you're just gonna die so I, I liked being able to cancel it i don't know necessarily why they got rid of that but i would like to have them back That's yeah i mean i get i guess they got rid of it because that was the the main thing, like if it's meant to be high risk, high reward, but there was no risk if you yeah, could just no cancel risk, yeah. it, right? So yeah. I think that's the main reason why they got rid of it. But yeah, I know what you mean. In general, it is like a fun PvP talent to try and exploit. Like, you know, I like the idea of like, you know, if your healers get tunneled or and they're just kind of leaving you alone and you have, they have, you know, you're just kind of like free will doing what you want, that it's nice to be able to like try mm -hmm. to punish that. Um, so yeah, Death Wish I think needs to be 
a bit reworked or ch you know mm -hmm. changed to something else basically i think that's the other problem with fury in general like uh, compared to arms a lot of these talents are just selfish you know barbarian battle trance blood rage death wish mm -hmm. the only talents that help your team is like master and commander and disarm everything else is just like about doing your own damage so i would love mm -hmm. to like have a few more different talents that are more situational kind of like the arms tree so you can like use different talents for certain things and to be honest i feel like slaughterhouse again it, it goes back to my point about fury needing a rework i really don't think 40 percent of us should exist like in the game yeah. like i i think it's unhealthy because it's just you're basically doing damage that's unhealable and that's like that's it like there's nothing the enemy team could do if you're connecting and you're doing a lot of damage and you have high rage regeneration um but saying that slaughterhouse should be something that's definitely a bit more like baseline i would say I, it's kind of annoying it's a talent because then it's just mm -hmm. one of those talents that is like a a must have in like 99 percent of games the only reason you wouldn't go slaughterhouse is like in 2v2 against double dps that have like no hybrid healer like a rogue mage for instance but any threes game you're gonna run it most twos games you're gonna run it and it feels just a bit annoying to like not you don't essentially have three pvp talents you have slaughterhouse and two pvp talents to choose from so it feels like with fury the pvp talents are a bit more frustrating to utilize there are definitely some good ones but yeah i'd like to see some change yeah i, I agree with it. like pretty much exactly what joe was saying and that's that's one of my biggest like like things that I dislike about Fury is it, it is very much so like a selfish spec. You don't actually like do anything for your team. You are literally there to do damage and like that is it. Like you do damage, you do as much damage as possible. Like that's your job. You don't have a lot of utility. You don't have a lot of like saves for your team or help for your team. So like it'd be nice if Fury got like War Banner or Duel or, you know, things like that, that, that it doesn't have at all right now. Mm. Um, and then on top of that, I agree with, even if Slaughterhouse like remains a PVP talent, um, I would like to see it if if they're not willing to give Fury an MS baseline, right? Like Fury was probably at its peak in PvP in like WAD and Legion. And in WAD, um, it's an ability that doesn't exist anymore, but your Mortal Strike was tied to Wild Strike, which was just a rotational ability. Same, you know, same as Mortal Strike. So if they put like MS baseline on like Raging Blow, or they made Slaughterhouse do regular MS on Raging Blow, it would suck to have to give up the PvP talent still, but I think it's better for the game and in general. And for the play style of Fury, to just have it on one of those abilities where you're going to be able to hit it and you don't have to have infinite uptime. So it doesn't encourage the spec to be like that. So like Reckless, where you like have to play super offensive, where it feels like you're gonna, you're just like on the back foot the whole game. Like that would be one of the things I think that needs to change most about Fury. Is this play style is just unhealthy. Fair. Yeah. Um, I, I think I'll say... In a way, I think that's what makes it fun, probably for the, like the that lower skill cap and uh, the those lower CR games. But I can see where you're talking, you know, especially when you start getting into those, you know, eighteen hundred plus, where mm -hmm. you you need to it, it it needs to be that that on voice. Well, I guess higher than eighteen hundred, I guess, but on voice team sport where you're you're communicating, helping each other out. But if all you're doing is just smorking it, then uh, yeah. It, well, it, yeah, I mean, it's, it's fun for the warrior, but it's not fun for the other team, right? And that's yeah. something to consider, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's also, there's also quite a few good PvP talents, though, still. Like, yeah. I think Blood Rage is really insane. Like, uh, root removal on a 20 second cooldown, you're basically like not going to get a, like a big root throughout the game. And it's probably, one of, again, one of the reasons why Fury Warriors can stick to targets you just if you're against a druid mage or a hunter you, you play blood rage and all of a sudden like most of their roots are gonna be useless and you're gonna keep sticking to your targets um so yeah they definitely have some like good strong pvp talents as well but yeah it's just all all to do with the warrior nothing really to do with your team mm -hmm. uh, warbringer looks like it's all right with the, that uh that charge root for two seconds and then shockwave yeah else, i mean but that's... yeah that's the thing though you would only take warbringer for the damage anyway like for mm -hmm. the most part people even though the root's nice but mm -hmm. what's like even nicer is like you gain damage from it so especially when you like necrolord or recklessness pops and you just 
uh, charge is insane. I mean, the the other thing about Warbringer as well, being OP in general, is because you'll have double time baseline now, right? So mm-hmm. that's going to make Warbringer become a bit more popular as well, since you'll always have double time, so you can always get even more damage from it. <laughs> would you Would you like charge to one end of the arena and then turn around and charge back the other way? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I I've literally seen some warriors like they stun the target and they run out charge, run out charge. Like it's yeah, really like, I like, see that too. <laughs> yeah, and it's just it's just with all cooldowns, wow. like it can do that much damage. I mean, you could have something similar with a signet as well, so it could definitely still be a thing. But yeah, it's um, it's also OP because it's like you it your charges on a separate global cooldown from your damaging spells. So you could always like do a charge into like another ability. So it's gonna hit really hard, like in conjunction yeah. with like an execute or you know, a rampage. Love it. Absolutely love it. Uh do we wanna look at prot PvP talents or <laughs> <laughs> I mean I don't mind checking them out and then we can go back to the other builds if you want, but with our uh, with pro, it's like, I mean, moral killer is basically what makes pro warriors the obnoxious thing that I was talking about before. Because mm-hmm. it's just like, you you can bait with the reduced cooldown and stuff like Thunderlord playing into effect. Um, you can basically constantly keep up demoralizing shout on everyone. So not only is the pro warrior doing more damage, but it, they're making everyone deal less damage. So when everyone's yeah. dealing, yeah, like what is it, twenty five percent less damage against your whole team? So mm-hmm. that's you know that's the cookie cutter for pro warrior right now, I would say, and it's the big reason why playing into one could feel really annoying. In in general, though, they do actually have a lot of like fun, like good PvP talents. It's probably like mm-hmm. you know. The second best after arms but it's just um yeah it's just very disrupted so again you have like disarm warbringer as well um you also have so thunderstruck was what i talked about a little bit earlier where mm-hmm. it doesn't dr for whatever reason like yeah it's it doesn't dr for the longest time so you root everyone for one second and you can use that like what every six seconds or every three seconds of avatar so it could be very annoying to play against. If, like, as a melee like player, it's very annoying to play against. Like you just, you pretty much think you're Every not gonna game move. Game. Yeah, <laughs> like especially when they have avatar, you're just like you just feel like you you're stuck forever. Mm-hmm. Um, sort of mode then, is really good too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is that is good actually. It's it's just like a soul DPS increase, but it's quite massive. Like mm-hmm. with shield blabbers in it, oh, and devastate. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's good. I also really like um, Field Bash is like low-key really good. It, again, it's like another kind of skill one because in the sense that if you use it when they cast, then, you know, it doesn't have a cooldown. And it actually hits, I think it hits, maybe maybe it's different in Dragonfly, but it used to hit as hard as Shield Slam. So it's like basically really? another shield slam but you can reduce their damage as well if you like get it on cast so and no cooldown too if they get it on cast yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly so it's like low key op if you like are against casters um and yeah obviously bodyguard is what uh, is why every jungle cleave has ptsd in legion so <laughs> it's just you <laughs> protect someone and all physical damage gets transferred to you, like 40% of it, mm. and obviously you're, as a pro warrior with shield block and ignore pain, you're just basically a tank, and then, you know, they can never yeah. kill anyone on your team. Mm-hmm. And it's a 15 but... second cooldown. Yeah. <laughs> That's something I wanted to talk about too at some point, the ignore pain thing, we talked about that. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Yeah. You know. no, yeah, we don't have to talk about it right now, but it is plot only now. I know a lot of people hate ignore pain. <clears throat> on, on arms and fury especially arms but it is brought only now so warriors can be quite a bit squishier i think specifically arms that is important yeah yeah that's actually a big oversight i i forgot that prop because arms mm-hmm. as well that's kind of like 
I mean, you get to choose between slam or ignore pain, so you always ignore mm-hmm. pain. Well, the other thing too is that um, depending on how it will be, I don't know if this is getting changed in Dragonflight. I haven't changed. Well, obviously, you don't have ignore pain anymore, but ignore pain right now procs tactician, which is not supposed to. If you look at the the tool to the tactician, it doesn't actually state that ignore pain is supposed to reset over power, um, but it does. Oh. So. That's another thing. You're going to lose out on a bit of damage from like losing your pain because overpower won't reset as much. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's true. Um, I guess is there? I think I think uh, we we've pretty much talked about most of it. Uh, is there anything that we haven't talked about that really should be highlighted? That you know, be it uh, um, spell changes, like you said, um, with ignore pain being removed from all the trees, or anything else that we should mention. I was disappointed I, that they removed Berserker Stance from all the trees, but I get why. It makes sense. <laughs> um, <laughs> having three stances was nice, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, th- I think that's like the rough kind of flashbacks having the triple <laughs> stances and enjoying it. Um, for me, I think... Let me see. I made some notes. Um, oh, yeah, so the slam builds. Okay, so there's a few talents. I mean, for... In overall, I feel like I don't like the slammed has like for arms especially because it's just like a few talent points. I think it's like three talents points, and I feel like slam is so just really like negligible. Like it, it doesn't really do anything. Like out of all your rage spenders, like mm-hmm. like you said, for now nowadays, I hardly press it. As fury, I never press it. And I think with arms, when you have rend, you'll you'll pretty much never press it as well. Like when you play a rend, you just kind of ball strike overpower rend. So I'm not sure what they want to do with slam. It feels like they always want to implement it, hence why they have talents for it. But it's just like I don't get why. Like if if it's never gonna be a thing, then I would just rather see slam be removed, kind of thing. And... Yeah, that was. Like I went on beta. Sorry to interrupt. I went on beta, and it, it literally I I did a build where I took all of like the slam things and slam was hitting for like less than like auto attacks. Like, I don't know, obviously the numbers aren't done yet, but it seems like it's just awful, even with all the talents. Yeah. Uh, And that was what I was going to talk about with fury though, because fury has the same talents except for one. So it could be viable fury because there's one called storm of swords, which makes your like well and deal 200% increased damage. And you have the additional ones. So it could maybe be a thing as Fury. Again, you have to invest like, what, three, four talent points in it. But three of them are in the general tree, so it's not so bad. And only one in the Fury tree. I mean, 200% increase along with like a a 20% increase and a 60% increase. I mean, it sounds like it should do a lot, but at the same time, you know. I mean, if it does no damage after that, then I don't know, it's just like yeah. remove slam. Like at this point, I don't know. like the only thing that made slam good was like the last thing I can remember was the proc and the DFA, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That was to do with like triple Azerite traits that were just OP. So mm. I feel like slam needs to either get changed to make it some maybe cool down viable thing or just removed. I mean there's I mean at least as arms I feel like there's enough buttons to press. I don't care if it goes in Fury kinda of the same. It's just I don't see where it would fit as a Fury warrior either. Okay. Um quick question. Just wondering thinking about uh this new PvP talent that they're adding for range casters with the the precognition where um if they are able to juke a kick, that that's going to uh, give them a benefit. I think it's uh, impre- increased haste for a period of time or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and immunity to CC for four seconds. Yes, that's right. The four second immunity. Um, what what do you guys think about that as as warriors? Because you know, you, you know, you guys have pummel. One of your one of your jobs is to 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 kick the kick the cast. Uh, do you see this as being something that's actually going to cause a bit of a mind game where you're going to hold on to your pummel for that lot, you know, try to make the, the caster ju- you know, continually try to juke uh, and, and then in, in effect, not actually cast anything or they, does it matter to you? I, I'm just wondering. 
I think it's good for the game. I mean, it's kind of like Concussive Blows, um, where if you hit your pummel, you get an effect, right? So mm -hmm. I think overall, mechanics like that, like if you if you fake cast, you should get rewarded more, and if you land kicks, you should get rewarded more. I feel like, if anything, that's what retail has kind of slowly lacked. Like, it used to matter more kind of in draft or TBC times, and nowadays, it almost feels like it never really matters. Like, it, depending on the matchup, of course, like, but if you, you have a favorable matchup, sometimes you could honestly, like, just miss every kick and win some games, so... I think mechanics like that could be healthy for the game to like it's kind of like a scene as an outplay right like if you can just mm -hmm. constantly kick your target interrupt them then you know you're kind of winning that mind game whereas the opposite spectrum if you play cast uh, you know a lot and you're you know unable to get locked out you're kind of winning that mind game as well the only issue is like it just needs to not be too op so like you said if you fake cast you get a cc immunity for four seconds that seems kind of yeah, I think Crazy. that should be. I think that should be shorter, <laughs> like two seconds. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, in, in comparison with what warriors get, where you kick them, you get five percent increased damage for ten seconds, right? So yeah, it's it like seem balanced. <laughs> yeah, it's like you know, it's it, it should be yeah, like a bit more balanced. I mean, it goes back to when ferals also. I think they. I think it was like Tiger Fury where. Yeah, they kicked someone said. and they gained an absurd amount of damage, and yeah. it was so good that they would literally kick like a water elemental pet or like a, a mirror image pet just to get the proc and you know deal crazy damage. So mm -hmm. it's I think it is overall health for the game, but it needs to be yeah not too op and not too like you know bad. It just needs to be I mean kind of like the warrior one is now getting a a small damage increase for pummeling sounds like pretty good to me yeah i agree all right i love it uh one last uh saving shots around the table uh rebel you first anything else that you'd like to bring up before we close this out i think we covered pretty much most of it i wanted to make sure we talked about the ignore pain thing which we, we ended up talking about but that was, that was like mm -hmm. my only thing that i feel like was kind of um, overlooked by a lot of people was that that got moved to the prod tree so i don't think a lot of people knew that I think that was quite valid. I, I missed that as well uh, in my cursory pre-study uh, for this. <laughs> uh, Joe, anything anything else you'd like to, to talk about or raise as a point? Just going over my notes. Um, I think we've talked about everything apart from maybe... Oh, yeah, so Fury... Well, because you were saying you're a bit sad about Fury. I, th I feel like Fury is still going to be viable if... Um, if it has good rage generation, it just really depends like how easy it is mm. to rampage back to back. But again, because of its design, it's just like solely reliant on like yes, yeah, keeping up eight stacks of slaughterhouse. So if you can do that throughout an arena game, Fury is gonna be insane. And obviously, if it doesn't die, if it can't keep up slaughterhouse, then I think it won't be you know it won't be too great. I was also gonna brush over on. A couple of things, if you don't mind. Like, yeah, um, the table's yours. I, That's what this is for. Okay. <laughs> so I feel like, um, I think some situational talents, like you obviously throughout the trees, you have some talents where you can pick and choose. And some are good, but some are just not. So a good example is like the. The piercing shout, the piercing howl, sorry, and the berserker shout, right? Like, that's a good choice. And you can kind of pick and choose depending on the situation. I feel like that that talent's like a, a great design kind of thing, like picking between a team utility cooldown or, you know, an increased snare. I feel hmm. like a choice like that's really good. But then you get some other choices. I mean, the slam one, for instance, where slam a whirlwind deal more damage, which, I mean, I guess whirlwind for PV is fine, but slam damage and then the titanic throw, it's just like, it feels like some of the choices are just really off. Or... Some of the choices just aren't really choices. Like the the Fury Warrior one, where you could where you pick between Gold Banner, so the, this cooldown. Even though it's not an amazing cooldown, it's still like the cooldown compared to like Blood Craze. Like Blood Craze is just completely awful kind of thing. Whereas, mm -hmm. so I feel like if you're gonna have to pick between talents again, maybe it's up for debate because I can see. 
people liking just to have one good talent or you know people like having a choice i feel like if you're gonna have a choice it should be a choice you know otherwise mm-hmm. yeah maybe the other talent just shouldn't be there it's kind of like that's the biggest thing about retail right now or like or about Shadowlands specifically right now is like if you go on like any of these sites that show you like the talents that people play and like the percentage of you know, warriors playing this talent above 2,400 or whatever, like 90% of archery is extremely cookie cutter, right? It's like, it's like 99% of people are playing this, 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 and this. And then there's like a little bit of variation in like the Stormbolt impending double time portion. And then literally everything else is like, you never change it ever, ever. Right. So I, I, I agree with Joe where like, if you're going to make these choices that you need to make in the tree, like you don't, you, you're trying to get so far away from that going into this expansion with the entirely new trees that I think that if there are choices within those trees, they need to be actual choices rather than like, it's an obvious choice. I wonder, it makes me wonder um, if on the PVE conversations, if they're having the same thing, but on the other side where they're like, this is such a good talent for PVE, but this other side, like we will never even touch it. And meanwhile, we're having the same conversation, but just on the, on the mirror of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I think, Skull Banner is like so obvious. Right? That's a hundred percent PVE. They're gonna take that every time. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. There's definitely. I mean, I yeah. I don't mind. I obviously understand when they have only PVE choices, right? Like stuff like. I mean, for Furious the Whirlwind, even for Warriors, I think there's a lot of like cleave talents, and for stuff like that, it's kind of obvious. It's like a a mythic plus like nuance build, right? So mm-hmm. stuff like that, I understand. Like, uh, which makes sense. Like, not everything's gonna, not the whole talent tree is gonna be based on PvP, uh, and obviously that's where the the PvP talents come in though as well. So uh, hopefully we get really good PvP talents. But yeah, for the normal talents, I feel like yeah, the choices need to be good. Like Blood Craze, no one is ever gonna pick Blood Craze, like ever. So <laughs> you're always gonna be Skull Banner. Again, there's other good choices though, like Berserker Shout, um, Piercing How, but then, yeah, the other choices should be either situational choices that do something different, or, you know, maybe like one is, you know, slightly better in different situations than the other, but you shouldn't have a choice where one is just flat out way weaker than the other in like every sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, go ahead. <laughs> No, this is very petty. But one other thing, I don't like Berserker Shout being like the same tooltip as well and the same spelling game. Like, uh, please change that tooltip. I, I hate that it's the same tooltip as Berserker H. I know it doesn't matter for most, but it's my OCD. <laughs> uh, Joe Fernandez for uh, quality assurance right there. That's uh, that's what we need. Yeah. Absolutely love it. All right, guys. I. Uh, I, I don't have anything else to add to this conversation. Um, so I think, uh, why don't we close this out? I thank you guys both for, for bringing all these wonderful points and, and providing some, some great, uh, great talent trees to, to work off of. And as we talked about this stuff, uh, just in case anybody listening wants to try to find you guys, uh, I guess first Revo, uh, where are you on the interwebs and where can people find you for all your wonderful ideas? Sure. Um, all my stuff is uh, Revo Olo Warrior. So Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, um, all of them are the same. So Revo Olo Warrior for everything. Awesome. And Joe? I think uh, it's just, yeah, Joe Fernandez123 on all my social medias, which is, yeah, like the same name everywhere. So if you want to find me on Twitter, Twitch, yeah, it's Joe Fernandez123. Love it. And uh, we'll always keep an eye out for both of you in the uh, orc highlights of the day uh, when you're getting when the clips show up there. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, uh, if anybody's looking for myself, I'm Jarisar at technically underscore PVP on Twitter. Otherwise, uh, technically PVP pretty much everywhere else. Uh, this is going to end up on the Bonus Roll Productions YouTube channel uh, for viewing later. But in the meantime, everybody stay classy. And we will see you at the next roundtable.